it's just the motivation of it. It's just the fact that I'm recording. And it's like, let's, let's, you know, let's keep going, let's keep going. It's creepy. Very creepy. Almost looks like a wooden doll or something. A wooden...
Hello, said Coraline. How did you get in? The cat didn't say anything. Coraline got out of her bed. She was wearing a long t-shirt and pajama bottoms. Have you come to tell me something? The cat yawned, which made its eyes flash green. Do you know where Mummy and Daddy are? The cat blinked at her slowly. Is that a yes? The cat blinked again. Coraline decided that she was indeed a yes. Will you take me to them? The cat stared at her. Then it walked out into the hall. She followed it and walked the length of the corridor and stopped down in, at the very end where a full-length mirror hung. The mirror had been a long time before the inside of the wardrobe door. It had been hanging there for the wall, I mean, there on the wall when they moved in. And although Coraline's mother had spoken occasionally of replacing it with something newer, she never had. Coraline turned on the light in the hall. The mirror showed the corridor behind her, but was only to be expected, but reflected in the mirror were her parents. They stood awkwardly in the reflection of the hall. They seemed sad and alone. As Coraline watched, they waved to her slowly with limp hands. Coraline's father had his arms around her mother. In the mirror, Coraline's mother and father stared at her. Her father opened his mouth and said something, but she couldn't she could hear nothing at all. Her mother breathed on the inside of the mirror glass as quickly before the fog faded and she wrote help us with a tip of her forefinger the fog of the inside of the mirror faded and so did the, her parents and now the mirror reflected only the corridor and Coraline and the cat were where are they Coraline asked the cat the cat made no reply but Coraline could imagine its voice dry as a dead fly on the windowsill in winter saying well where do you think they are? They aren't going to come back, are they? Said Coraline. Not under their own steam. The cat blinked at her. Coraline took it, it as a yes. Right, said Coraline. Then I suppose that there is only one thing left to do. She walked into her father's study. She sat down at his desk. Then she picked up the telephone and she opened it. Opened the phone up book and telephoned the local and telephoned the local police station police said a gruff male voice hello she said my name is Coraline Jones you're up a bit after your bedtime aren't you young lady said the policeman possibly said Coraline who was not going to be diverted but I'm ringing to report a crime and what sort of crime would that be kidnapping grown up napping really my parents have been stolen away into a world of the other side of the mirror in our hall and do you know who stole them asked the police officer Coraline could hear the smile in his voice and she tried extra hard to sound like an adult might sound to make him take her seriously I think my other mother has them both in her clutches she may want to keep them and sew her, their eyes with black buttons, or she may simply have them in order to lure me back into reach of her fingers. I'm not sure. Ah, the nefarious clutches of her fetish fingers, is it? He said. Mm. You know what I'm, I suggest, Miss Jones? No, said Coraline. What? You ask your other mother to make you a big old mug of hot chocolate and then give you a great big old hug. There's nothing like hot chocolate and a hug for making me, making the nightmares go away. And if, if she starts to tell you off for waking her up at this time of night, why you tell her that that's what the policeman said. He had a deep reassuring voice. Coraline was not as reassured. When I see her, said Coraline, I shall tell her that. And she put down the telephone. The black cat who had sat on the floor 
grooming his fur through this entire conversation, now stood up and led the way into the hall. Coraline went back into her room bedroom and put on her blue dressing gown and her slippers. She looked under the sink of her flashlight and found one, but the batteries had long since run down and it barely glowed with the fine of being to his straw colored light. She put it down again and found a box of, in case of an emergency, white wax candles and thrust one into the candlestick. She put on an apple in each of her pockets. She picked up the ring of keys and took the old black key off the ring. She walked into the drawing room and looked at the door. She had the feeling that the door was looking at her, which she knew was silly and knew on the deeper level was somehow true. She went back into her bedroom and rummaged in the pocket of her jeans. She found the stone with the hole in, in it and put it in her dressing gown pocket. She lit the candle wick with a match and watched it sputter the light. Then she picked up the black key. It was cold in her hand. She put it in the keyhole in the door, but did not turn the key. When I was a little girl, said Coraline to the cat, we lived in our old house a long, long time ago. My dad took me for a walk on the wasteland between our house and and the shops. It wasn't the best place to go for a walk, really. There were all these things that people had thrown away back there. Old cookers and broken dishes and dolls with no arms and no legs and empty cans and broken bottles. Mom and Dad made me promise not to go exploring back there because there were too many sharp things and tetanus and such. But I kept telling them I want to explore it. So one day my dad put on his big brown boots and his gloves and put my boots in, on me and my jeans and sweater and we went for a walk. We must have walked about for about 20 minutes. We went down this hill to the bottom and, grow, and gully where a stream, a, a stream was. When my dad suddenly said to me, Coraline, run away, up the hill now. He said it in a tight sort of way, urgently. So I did. I ran up the hill. Something hurt me on the back of my arm as I ran, but I kept running. As I got to the top of the hill, I heard somebody thundering up the hill behind me. It was my dad charging like a rhino when he reached me. He picked me up in his arms and swept me over the edge of the hill. And then he stopped and we puffed and we panted and we looked back down to the gully. The air was alive with yellow wasps. We must have stepped into a wasp nest in the rotten branch as we walked. And while I was running up the hill, my dad stayed and got stung to give me time to run away. His glasses had fallen off when I when he ran. I only had the one sting on the back of my arm, but it had 39 stings all over him. We counted later in the bath. The black cat began to wash its face and whiskers in a manner that indicated increasing impatience. Coraline reached down and stroked the back of its head and neck. The cat stood up, walked several paces until it was out of her reach. Then it sat down and looked up at her again. So, said Coraline, later that afternoon, my dad went back again and to the wasteland to get his glasses back. He said if he left it another day, he wouldn't be able to remember where they'd fallen. And soon he got home wearing his glasses. He said that he wasn't scared when he was standing there and the wasp were stinging him and hurting him. And he was watching me run away because he knew he had to give me enough time to run or the wasp would have come after both of us. Coraline turned the key in the door. It turned with a loud clunk. The door swung open. There was
was no brick wall on the other side of the door, only darkness. A cold wind blew through a passage, a passageway. Coraline made no move to walk through the door, and he said, That wasn't brave of him, doing that, just standing there and being stung, said Coraline to the cat. It wasn't brave because he wasn't scared. It was the only thing he could think to do, he could do. But going back again to the to do going back again to get his glasses when he knew the wasps were the wasps were there when he really when he was really scared, that was brave. She took her first step down the dark corridor. She could smell dust and damp and mustiness that the cat padded along there beside her. And why was that? asked the cat, although it sounded barely interested. Because she said, when you're scared, but you still do it anyway, that's brave. The candle cast a huge, strange, flickering shadows along the wall. He, she heard something moving in the darkness beside her or to one side of her. She could not tell. It seemed as if it was keeping pace with her, whatever it was. And that's why you're going back to her world then, said the cat, because your father once saved you from wasps. Don't be silly, said Coraline. I'm going back for them because they're my parents. And if I, and if they notice I was gone, I'm sure they would do the same for me. You know, you're talking again. How oh, fortunate I am, said the cat, in having a traveling companion of such wisdom and intelligence. Its tone remained sarcastic, but its fur was bristling, and its brush of a tail stuck in the air. Coraline was going to say something like, sorry, or... Wasn't it a lot shorter walk last time that um, when the candle went out of the uh, suddenly as if it had been snuffed or uh, by someone's hand? He was like uh, scrambling and pattering, and Coraline could feel her heart beating, her heart pounding against her ribs. She put out one hand and felt something wispy, like a spider web brush her hands and her face. At the end of the corridor, the electric light went on, blinding after the darkness. A woman stood silhouetted by the light, a little head ahead of Coraline. Coraline, darling, she called. Mom, said Coraline, and she ran forward eager and re relieved. Darling, said the woman, why did you ever run away from me? Coraline was too close to stop, and she felt the other mother's cold arms enfold her. She stood there, rigid and trembling, as the other mother held her tightly. Where are my parents? Coraline asked. We're here, said her other mother, in a voice so close to her real mo mother's that Coraline could scarcely tell them apart. We're here. We're ready to love you and play with you and feed you and make your life interesting. Coraline pulled back and the other mother let her go with reluctance. The other father, who had been sitting on a chair in the hallway, stood up and smiled. Come on into the kitchen, he said. I'll make us a midnight snack and you'll want something to drink. Hot chocolate, perhaps. Coraline walked down the hallway until she reached the mirror at the end. There was a nothing reflected in it but a young girl in her dressing gown and slippers who looked like she had recently been crying, but whose eyes were real. Her eyes were real eyes, not black buttons, and who was holding tightly to a burned-out candle in the candlestick. She looked like a girl in the mirror, and the girl in the mirror looked back at her. I will be brave, thought Coraline. No, I am brave. She put down the candlestick on the floor and turned around. The other mother and the other father were looking at her. Huh? 
hungrily. I don't need a snack, she said. I have an apple, see? And she took an apple she took an apple from her dressing gown pocket, then bit into it with relish and an enthusiasm that she did not really feel. The other father looked disappointed, and the other mother smiled, showing a full set of teeth, and each of the teeth was a tiny bit too long. The light in the hallway made her black button eyes glitter and gleam. You don't frighten me, said Caroline, although they did frighten her very much. I want my parents back. The world seemed to shimmer a little, um, a little at edges. Whatever would I have done with your old parents if they had left you? Coraline, it seemed we must must be because they came bored with you or tired. Now I will be, never become bored with you, and I will never abandon you. You will always be safe here with me. The other mother, wet, uh, wet looking back, looking black hair drifted around her head, like a, like the tentacles of a creature in the deep ocean. They weren't bored with me, said Coraline. You're lying. You stole them. Silly, silly Coraline. They are fine wherever they are. Coraline simply glared at the other mother. I'll prove it, said the other mother, and brushed the surface of the mirror with her long white fingers. It clouded over as, as if a dragon had breathed on it, and then it cleared. In the mirror, it was daytime already. Coraline was looking at the hallway all the way down to her from front all the way down to her front door. The door opened from outside and Coraline's mother and father walked inside. They carried suitcases. That was a fine holiday, said Coraline's father. How nice it is not to have Coraline anymore, said her mother with a happy smile. Now we can do all the things we always wanted to do, like go abroad, but we're prevented from doing by having a little daughter said her father, I take great comfort in knowing that her other mother will take better care of her than we ever could. The mirror fogged and faded and reflected the night once more. See, said her mother, said the other mother. No, said Coraline, I don't see and don't believe it either. She hoped that what she had just seen was not real, but she was not as certain as she sounded. There was a tiny doubt inside her, like a maggot in an apple core. Then she looked up and saw an expression on her mother's, on her other mother's face, a flash of real anger, which crossed her face like summer lightning, and Coraline was sure in her heart that was in her heart that that was she had seen in the mirror was no more than an illusion. Coraline sat down on the sofa and ate her apple. Please, please, said her other mother. Don't be difficult. She walked into the drawing room and clapped her hands twice. There was a rustling noise and a black rat appeared. It stared up at her. Bring me the key, she said. The rat chittered, then ran. Then it ran the, through the door, through the open door that led back to Coraline's own flat. The rat returned, dragging the key behind it. Why don't you have your own key on this side? Asked Coraline. There's only one key, only one door. Did, said the other mother. I mean, the other father. Hush! Said the other mother. You must not bother our darling Coraline's head with such trivialities. Tri tri Trivialities. She put the key in the keyhole and twisted. The lock was stiff, but it clunked close. She dropped the key into her apron pocket. Outside, the sky had begun to lighten to a luminous gray. If we aren't going to have a midnight snack, said the other mother, we still need our beauty sleep. I am going back to bed. Coraline, I w 
would strongly suggest that you do the same. She placed her long white fingers on the shoulders of her the father, and she walked him out of the room. Coraline walked over the other door at her far corner of the drawing room. She tugged on it, but it was tightly locked. The door over her other parents' bedroom was now closed. She was indeed tired, but she did not want to sleep in the bedroom. She did not want to sleep under the same roof as the other mother. The front door was not locked. Coraline walked out into the dawn and down the stone stair. She sat down on the bottom step. It was cold. Something furry pushed itself against her side in one smooth, insinuating motion. Coraline jumped, then breathed a sigh of relief when she saw it was Oh, it's you, she said to the black cat. See, said the cat, it wasn't so hard recognizing me, was it? Even without names. Well, what if I wanted to call you? The cat wrinkled its nose and managed to look unimpressed. Calling cats is confided, tends to be a rather overrated activity. Might as well call a whirlwind. What if it was dinner time? asked Coraline. Wouldn't you want to be called then? Of course, said the cat, but it, a simple cry of, of dinner would do nicely. See, no need for names. Why does she want me? Coraline asked the cat. Why does she want me to stay here with her? She was, she wants something to love, I think, said the cat, something that isn't her. She might want something to eat as well. It's hard to tell with creatures like that. Do you have any advice? asked Caroline. The cat looked as if it were about to say something else sarcastic. Then it flickered its whiskers and said, Challenge her. There's no guarantee she'll play fair, but her kind of things love but her kind of thing loves games and challenges. What kind of things thing is that? asked Coraline. But the cat made no answer, simply stretched look, luxuriantly and walked away. Then it stopped and turned and said, I'd go inside if I were you. Get some sleep. If you, you have a long day ahead of you. And then the cat was gone. Still, Coraline realized it was a point. She crept back into the silent house, past the closed bedroom door inside, which the other mother and the other father what she wondered slept waited and then it came to her that she would open the door and she would find it empty or more precisely that it was empty room and it would remain empty until the exact moment that she opened the door somehow that made her it easier Coraline walked into the green and pink parody of her own bedroom she closed the door and hauled the toy box in front of it. It would not keep anyone out, but the noise somebody would make trying to dislodge it would wake her. She hoped, and that uh, the toys in their toy box were still mostly asleep, and they stirred and muttered as she moved their box, and then they went back to sleep. Coraline checked under their bed looking for rats, but there was nothing there. She took off her dressing gown and slippers and climbed into bed and fell asleep with barely enough time to reflect as she did so on what the cat could have meant by a challenge. Thank you so much for being with me here. I'm hoping you're enjoying the story. Again, very different than the movie very, very different. But thank you so much for being here with me. I hope that um, you're enjoying this. Um, please, guys, don't forget to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Share, comment. Uh, follow me on Instagram. And I will see you in my next video.